Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'm giving you guys an update of my frangipani here. As you can see it's currently in its dormant phase, it's been like this over the winter time. Now normally when I have this in my house, if it doesn't have any pests or diseases on it, I let it keep its leaves all winter. And I keep it in a semi-dormant phase where it doesn't seem to grow any more leaves, but it just kind of sits there with its existing leaves in a warm living room. But last autumn, as I showed you in my last update on this plant, it actually has red spider mite on it, which is a really hard pest to get rid of. And it also had a lot of thrips and even a small amount of aphids. So what I did is I put it out on my balcony to give it a cold shock. What that made it do is it made it drop all its leaves. That makes it a lot e more easy for me to deal with any pests because the pests feed on the leaves. If it doesn't have any leaves, the pests are gonna really struggle to survive. And there's a lot less surface area for me to treat with any kind of pest treatment. So it's been now several months, I think it was back in October or November that I brought it inside to a, to a colder room and it's now um, uh, April, so it's been several months now and as you can see there's been no growth, the uh, growth tips have just kind of completely stopped. This one did actually have a, um, a flower bud in the middle, which is that one there, which is what, that's the flower bud and the, these three are new growth sections that are coming through and I've been treating it with a soap spray, spraying the buds every few weeks and hopefully that has killed any of the uh, remaining pests. I certainly haven't noticed any pests on it. I've also been keeping it extremely dry, just so it's completely dormant, because when this is completely dormant, if it is wet, the soil can often rot off the roots. So I've been keeping it nice and dry. There's just been given occasionally a tiny bit of water, especially to this plant here, which is the Madagascan Jasmine. The Madagascan Jasmine doesn't go completely dormant in the wild, so I need to keep it a little bit moist. Now, unfortunately, I haven't seen any new growth coming out of this, which is a bit worrying. The top half has definitely died here. Um, you can see on the lower section of the stem here, it's still got a bit of green and a bit of life in it. So I'm hoping it might re-sprout once it warms up. But certainly, I was expecting some slow growth over winter, because it doesn't go completely dormant, unlike the frangipani, which if you keep it cold, could stay dormant probably for almost a year or two um, and still be alive. So what I'm going to do in this video is I need to prune this because as you can see it's really tall at the moment and my window in the room that this grows in is probably the top of the window is not much higher than this so if it grows any taller it's not going to get any of the direct sunlight so that's why I'm going to be cutting it quite a bit lower so that it has space to grow again because it tends to grow about a foot or two every year and see the end of um, summer two years ago they tried to flower here and then they grew that much stem in, uh, in, in the one new season. So it'll do the same again if I don't give it a hard prune. Unfortunately, this means it probably won't flower this year. And to be honest, I've never managed to get this to flower since I bought it. I bought it several years ago. Uh, several times it tries to flower. You can see the little flower bud kind of forms in the middle. And where it does form flower bud, it branches. So it branches into three stems there. Also branches into three stems over here. And this flower bud that formed last year is going to cause it to branch into another three stems. Um, so unfortunately it probably won't flower this year, but as I say I've had trouble trying to get it to flower and it's just because it's not hot enough in my flat and it's, it's not um, enough sunshine either because it's just a, a, a southeast facing window in Scotland so it's not really intense enough sunlight and it's not warm enough, it's probably only about 21, 22 degrees in midsummer and it really needs more like 25, 30 degrees for a frangipani to flower. But anyway I'll give this a hard prune. Now I have put down a lot of cardboard and the reason for that is because it has a lot of latex in the sap here and if I leave, if I cut this it'll probably drip quite a lot of sap and I don't want to get this sap all over the ground so if I can just get it on the on the cardboard that would be good. So I'll just reposition the camera now and I'll reposition the plant so I can get ready for pruning. So I'm going to give this plant quite a hard prune because I don't want to have to prune it every single year because it generally takes a couple of years for a flower to form on a stem so if you have a stem that's been recently cut You'll probably just have leaves for a year or two before it decides to form a flower bud. It has to be quite a mature, uh, strong stem before it forms a flower bud usually. So I'm going to cut it quite hard. Also this means that um, I won't have to do this every single year. And they'll probably produce a lot of strong bushy growth when I do this. So everywhere I cut it, it'll probably produce two or three new shoots. So I'm going to cut every single stem apart from this lowest one down here, because that one's low enough. But all these other ones need to be cut. And I'm probably going to go to about this kind of height here. So expecting there to be a huge amount of sap from this, but we'll see how it goes. So I'll go with the first one here. And you need, there's already plenty of sap starting to drip out. And that's because it's quite normal for a frangipani. There's a lot of latex sap. And even though this hasn't been watered for 
several months really, just a tiny little splash of water every now and again. Still loads of moisture in the stems and they're still going to bleed a huge amount. Now this central stem will be a bit trickier because um, it's quite a woody and quite a thick stem but I'll hopefully be able to do it with my secateurs. Ideally I should probably use a saw because it's that, that large but if I'm careful I should be able to cut it with my secateurs. So that's it now cut. I'll just give you a close up now just so you can see um, the amount of sap that really does pour off these plants. So as I was saying this plant was dormant when I did this and it hasn't been watered for a long time but you can just see it's absolutely dripping with sap pouring out and at the cut ends of the stems here you can see puddles of white latex sap. If I go around here you can see that cut stem there a big puddle of latex sap that has been pouring out even though it's been dormant for so long and not been watered. So if this was still in the active growth phase it would probably bleed even more than this but it shouldn't hopefully bleed itself out, hopefully it'll, it'll patch up its wounds pretty quickly. I've seen frangipanis cut really hard before and they always responded really well even when they've bled really badly. So what I've got left now is a lot of branches. I'm going to cut these into one foot sections and then going to try and make some cuttings from them. I've had successful cuttings before from frangipanis and they're generally not too difficult to take cuttings from. So for, certainly from the tips I'll take about a foot cutting and just like that. And that'll make good cutting material. I'll also try some central sections of the stems. I've not tried the middle of the stems before for cuttings and they don't tend to take quite as well as the, as the stem tips. But I'll give that a go. I'll let the uh, ends callus over, so after I've cut them, I'll leave them for a week or so until the uh, cut wounds have kind of healed over, otherwise you'll get root when you try to, to root them in the, in the uh, propagating media. And then what I'll do is I'll put them in a heated propagator in some compost, something that's really free draining, and I'll make some cuttings out of them. But I'll try and do a video of that later on in more detail. As you can see, very drastic cut on my frangipani. It does look pretty sad doing such a hard cut. But I'm pretty confident that this will regrow nice and strongly and it'll be a nice bushy plant again come midsummer.